In Henan Province, Kaifeng City, Lexue Choushi Elementary School is currently facing a serious crisis, with accumulating debts and the imminent threat of closure. Teachers are refusing to teach due to unpaid wages, and students have not received textbooks even after four days of school. According to Tianyan Cha, a Chinese website for business data, the school was established in September 2015 and is a full-time residential and boarding school. In 2019 to 2021, Lexue Choushi Elementary School faced three contract dispute cases, leading to the Xiangfu District People's Court in Kaifeng City issuing restrictions on consumption orders against the school and its legal representative. A ruling dated January 15, 2024, from the Xiangfu District Court indicated that the school's 2.25 million yuan deposit had been frozen by the court. Parents visited the school on February 28th and 29th, demanding explanations, but there has been no progress, and the tuition fees have not been refunded. On March 2nd, news about a primary school in Hunan owing teachers' salaries and no classes held made it to the top of the trending list on Weibo, a popular Chinese social media platform. On February 29th, a parent from Kaifeng, Hunan, revealed that after four days of school, there were no teachers giving classes at the elementary school. According to Guizhou TV's People's Concern program, parents said that due to unpaid wages, teachers did not report to work, and the principal had not paid salaries for six months. Only one teacher was present in each class, and students watched cartoons or movies, and there were no regular meals provided in the school cafeteria. The parents said that only one Chinese teacher taught third-grade students for a day, and for the other classes, children just watched TV. The homeroom teacher said, "The school is not paying our salaries now." And we teachers can only look after the children. Parents mentioned that if teachers were not paid for six months, they must be struggling with their own family expenses. Although teachers are being responsible for the students, the school is not being accountable to the teachers or parents, and the principal has not come forward. This incident has drawn attention on the internet. Mainland Chinese people said, "It's not just a school delaying salaries. From what I know from friends, hospitals have delayed salaries to doctors and nurses." And businesses have also delayed salaries. The explanation is that there's always no money, or they pay the salaries of the directors first, and the rest of the staff don't get paid if there's no money. Another person said, "I don't know why many workplaces are delaying salaries this year, including government departments and street offices. Salaries are decreasing, and they say there's no money in the treasury, which is a bit worrying." A Hunan civil servant said. I've been working for a county government in Hunan since 2013, and my monthly salary, without deductions for social security and housing fund, is only 1,625 yuan. This is still the delayed salary from the previous month. Under the rule of the CCP, coupled with three years of mandatory pandemic prevention and control, China's economy has sharply deteriorated. Major enterprises in the real estate industry have gone bankrupt one after the other. Foreign capital has withdrawn. Youth unemployment rates have soared, and local governments, apart from issuing bonds and asking for money from higher authorities, have seen a significant reduction in fiscal revenue. There has been a wave of salary reductions for civil servants across the country. Almost all formal employment benefits have decreased. Whether teachers, doctors, or civil servants, they are facing salary cuts or even delayed payments. I reported Suihua People's Hospital using my real name for long-term withholding of wages and insulting employees. I've been working at the hospital for 13 years. During this time, the hospital has changed three bank cards. The transaction records of these three cards can prove that my monthly salary was paid less than 12 times every year. Every year, my salary was withheld for several months, and after being withheld, I couldn't trace where my salary went. The public institution reimbursed 19 months' worth of salaries, including base pay and performance bonuses, while all other public institutions. Institutions received their salary reimbursements. Our hospital only distributed half of the amount owed. The whereabouts of the remaining half are still unknown. Whenever I presented evidence seeking justice and assistance, the hospital director instructed lower-level leaders to have meetings with me. They applied psychological pressure on me as per the director's instructions. Whenever I couldn't bear the psychological pressure and financial difficulties, I approached the director to request timely salary payments.
However, he responded with insults and verbal abuse. I don't understand why I, who have worked hard to earn my salary, do not have the right to know when it will be paid. Where did our salaries go? Why do I have to beg for the money I earned? Why do I have to endure various forms of humiliation? National level civil servants with the worst treatment in the country. A civil servant in Hunan tells us that the monthly salary deposited into his bank account is 2,864 yuan, plus a housing savings fund of 494 yuan, and a monthly car subsidy of 600 yuan, totaling an annual income of 47,496 yuan. It seems unacceptable, but in reality, the car subsidy has been overdue for three years. The savings fund has been suspended for six months. And medical insurance and social security contributions have been suspended for three months and 20 months, respectively. One of our female colleagues is pregnant and needs hospitalization recently. Due to the suspension of medical insurance, she cannot reimburse medical expenses. During her pregnancy, she also needs to do tutoring to earn some living expenses. Another male colleague has a child under the age of one and works as an MC and trainer on weekends. A friend of mine working in the disciplinary committee goes to drive for Didi on weekends. Some ask, why not quit with such low wages? In actual fact, many people spend a lot of money and effort to take the civil service exam and therefore are reluctant to resign. Moreover, with the economic downturn, it is difficult to find another job after resigning. Pierre-Antoine Donnet, former editor-in-chief of AFP, recently contacted and interviewed a woman familiar with China's domestic situation and wrote an article in a French magazine. The informant said that the financial crisis has resulted in one-fifth of civil servants in provinces other than Beijing not receiving salaries. In Beijing, there is no problem, but let's take Wenzhou as an example. The situation is very serious in this coastal province. In Sichuan, the situation is even worse. I heard some senior financial officials say that it is necessary to declare national bankruptcy. The actual GDP growth is less than 3% far from the official figure of 5.2% in 2023, and has actually returned to the level of the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s. Now the situation is critical, and everyone feels afraid, and the government is no longer trustworthy. Public hospitals are also in a dire situation. Doctor salaries are very low because local governments are heavily in debt and have no money. In Shanghai, some doctors only earn about 130 US dollars, or about 940 yuan per month. The woman pointed out that from deputy ministers to the children of senior leaders at all levels, either they have already left China or are preparing to leave China. Many children of senior officials, that is, the children of the second generation princelings, have lost confidence in the country. In China, those with a lot of money no longer deposit their money in banks because they have also lost confidence. What is foremost on everyone's mind now is fear, she said. Many senior party officials feel useless, so they spend their time playing cards. This conceals a feeling that is widespread in decision-making bodies. There is nothing that can be done. She continued, This is a bit like the students in Shanghai demonstrating in the streets, opposing the zero-COVID policy and waving white banners. The woman hinted at the demonstrations that affected about 20 cities in China at the time. In the fall of 2022, Residents express anger over the COVID-19 authoritarian measures. Currently, criticism of Xi Jinping is rampant. People seem to be watching a drama unfold where an uneducated emperor exercises power alone. This situation is unprecedented since the era of Mao Zedong. She believes Xi Jinping has lost touch with reality. Everyone around him is a follower. They flatter him and conceal the truth from him. She said, I don't think anyone in China wants violence. Even if the Chinese people have lost hope, even if today's China is like a pressure cooker about to explode, they don't want violence. As for Xi Jinping's future, who knows? China cannot stay in this state for long. We are witnessing repeated purges within the ranks of power. So, people are waiting. The current situation is confirmed in a widely circulating article online. The article was written by someone who returned from overseas to visit relatives during the Chinese New Year. He said he had several relatives in the government. This time he returned to China and talked to hundreds of people from all walks of life, all ages, and found that their common characteristic is that almost all of them have resentment towards the CCP and Xi Jinping, and they are all eager to see change. The mood of the Chinese people has undergone a radical change. 
He wrote, The trust of the people in the government has dropped to the lowest point in all my memory. There is not a single relative, friend, or classmate around who has confidence in the CCP, and everyone has the attitude of living one day at a time. And because they are worried about their phones being monitored, relatives lock their phones in cabinets and change rooms before they dare to gather and complain. And the general consensus among his classmates and friends is stay outside and not come back. He recalled that five years ago, his parents tried very hard to persuade him to return to China. But this time, they threatened him, saying, No matter what happens in the future, don't come back. As local governments in China face deficits, relatively stable positions at local institutions are becoming precarious and even take back wages that have been paid out. In January, Dongxing Securities in Xincheng District, Beijing, announced that it would start reverse wage recovery. In other words, target employees with poor performance and take back their wages. This is the first firm in China to announce such a policy. Xiao Fan, a civil servant in Beijing, confessed to overseas media in December last year that although the basic salary has not changed, various subsidies and bonuses have been reduced by tens of thousands of yuan. A salary reduction office was specially set up in our bureau, saying that they want to eliminate the unreasonable benefits we had before. In November last year, more than 500 medical staff at the Public Maternity and Child Health Care Hospital in Ruzhou City. Henan Province were owed wages, medical insurance, and savings funds. Some were even owed for a year, triggering protests by doctors at the hospital entrance. The local health commission responded with just two words no money. Also in Henan, 34 teachers in Sam Man Sha City issued a public statement of fasting to protest against the lack of labor contracts, salaries, social insurance, medical insurance, and savings fund after four years of employment. The wages of civil servants and employees of state owned enterprises in two districts in Nanjing have been overdue for three months since last year. In Guangdong, pensions have been significantly reduced by more than one third. There are also reports that some cities like Tianjin have long been financially bankrupt, with more than 18,000 employees of the Tianjin Public Transport Group owed salaries for several months. According to limited available data, both civil servants and staff within the government. Have seen their salaries reduced by at least 15%, and some even more than 30%. Moreover, the higher the level, the greater the reduction. People are discussing that China has entered an era of universal salary reduction. China is undergoing a massive upheaval. Chinese workers and grassroots laborers bear the brunt of it, inevitably sharpening class antagonism amid crises in various regions. Over the past year, protests have erupted across China. According to the latest report from China Labor Bulletin, there were 1,794 recorded worker protests in 2023, a 216% increase from the 831 protests in 2022. Among them, strikes by manufacturing workers saw the highest increase, rising from 37 in 2022 to 438 in 2023. This not only indicates the severity of China's economic crisis, But also reflects the dramatic changes in China's economic structure. China Labor Bulletin is an NGO based in Hong Kong that regularly releases reports on Chinese workers' struggles and current conditions. The report states that many factories refuse to pay compensation using various excuses and methods to force workers to resign voluntarily. Some factories openly reduce wages, with Shenzhen Welfare PCB factory lowering wages by 70%. Leading to continuous worker protests. In this series of events, it's unimaginable that workers have to endure months or even years of wage arrears. This shows how helpless workers are without their own independent trade unions. Former Beijing lawyer Liang Xiaohua analyzed on February 29th that if indeed one fifth of China's civil servants cannot be paid, this regime could soon face collapse. He said that even if the economy is relatively bad and all aspects are not doing well, The CCP can still maintain its investment in civil servants, the military, and the police through unlimited money printing. It can confiscate some private assets and use various methods to make money. But if civil servants cannot be paid, it means the CCP is facing collapse. Xiaohua said, Because the CCP defends its regime, it takes various measures for various purposes, including external suppression and internal cleansing, all ultimately to maintain its political power. 
and these civil servants, including police in the military, are its core strength. Professor Xie Tian from the University of South Carolina, Aiken, believes that once the iron rice bowl is no longer guaranteed, those affected by the impact and layoffs will become dissatisfied and lose confidence in the CCP regime. Sheng Shui, chief editor of China Spring based in Toronto, Canada, analyzed that in fact all aspects of Chinese society have been in crisis for a long time. However, in recent years, Xi Jinping's major policies have indeed caused intense resentment throughout society. Especially during COVID, Xi Jinping's policies lack basic common sense, which indeed caused greater dissatisfaction among Chinese people. Today's pressure cooker state in China should actually be viewed from three perspectives. According to Sheng Shui, firstly, the CCP's rule faces multiple difficulties, which it almost cannot solve by itself. Even if it wants reform and democracy, it's already too late. The CCP has accumulated too much resentment and no one believes it anymore. Secondly, the people. China has reached a state of high pressure, which is basically the boiling of public sentiment. However, the CCP is ultimately a state terrorism regime, and resources are controlled by the rulers. If the pressure cooker explodes, it may lead to a situation where the people pay a greater price and sacrifice. Thirdly, the external pressure from the international community. If continuous pressure is applied to the CCP, it may lead to some adjustments, but currently, many parts of the world are experiencing wars. Countries must decide whether to relax their sanctions on China or continue to do business. Shui believes that many of the world's issues stem from international support of the CCP. The quicker the world deals with the CCP, the less consequences the entire world will suffer.